We are privileged once again to be talking with Rabbi Leib Tropper Shlita. And today, Rabbi Tropper, a very, very difficult subject, which has been broached many, many times by many, many people. And it's one which really requires Das Torah to help us understand how to look at certain things which happened in the Shoah, the Holocaust. Those who perished, all of those Yidden, men, women, and children, do we consider their deaths to be, by definition, Kiddush Hashem, having died for the sanctification of God's name? Does it come into that category, or is it perhaps considered something else? Interesting you ask, because um, I've been in kind of emotional turmoil about that question after seeing that Harab Desla, Zechat Hadik Levracha, Lachayel Mabba, writes in his third Sefer Mechtav Melio, page 348, that it was not in the category of regular Kiddush Hashem, which we're used to hearing about the great, most sacred way to die is Kiddush Hashem. Uh, it's definitely a more sacred way than dying, just passing away and you, you're, you're retiring your life, you know, you're retiring your years and, um, and you pass on. It's greater than that, but it's not the Kiddush Hashem which we talk about in Shas. Why is it not that way? What, what is the reason that it should not be that Kiddush Hashem? No, but th- that th- in no way diminishes the magnitude of the way they died. It doesn't do any diminish it. it, it it's still greater than a regular death, where it's, it's re- but it's not the le- same level as somebody who's Mikhail Shem Shemayim, which we'll talk about in this course in a minute, what that regular way of Kiddush Shem Shemayim is. When somebody has a choice, the Gemaras, all the Gemaras that talk about Kiddush Shem Shemayim talk about we're given a choice to either serve idolatry or you're going to go and get killed. And it's a tempting choice because you have a way out to save, spare your life and you could live for another beautiful 70 years and have a wonderful family. And uh, But you choose to say, no, no, I can't do that. I can't commit idolatry. And you perish because they, they threaten to kill you and they kill you. That is unequivocally Kiddush Hashem. In, during the, the Holocaust, so we call it Holocaust, Shoah, the, the German war, Nazi war against the Jews, it wasn't a choice. I mean, they weren't giving you saying, you know, do this and I'll let you live, or do, don't do that and I won't let you live. They were just killing Jews because you're Jewish. The mashmos in the Rambam, is that one who dies because they're a Jew, just because they have a t- title named Jew, that itself is a Kiddush Hashem. But Rav Desla, in Chelek Gimel, of his Mikhtav Me Eliyahu, I will read it to you a little bit, um, takes issue with that, and even some people who I know, like Rav, Rav Ehrenberg Zetzal, in the Chuvis of his sefer called Dvar Yehoshua, he was a victim of the Holocaust, and he still refuses to call it a act of Kiddush Hashem, as the halacha describes it in Yeridaya and in other places in Shas. But I will I will start off with Rav Desla's p- position. He says, many times we die for Kiddush Hashem. What 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 is that about? Rabbi Mishal of Tamu Ma Betza. What's the benefit of dying for that? Kiddush Hashem, in the real case of Kiddush Hashem, where you're given a choice and you choose not to give up your your religion and the Shmiris HaMitzvahs, what is the benefit of that? Ilu mitoch gzeres hashemad meisu umosur nafshem al Kiddush Hashem. There was a gzeres of shemad that you had to go and convert. Okay, it's it's halolu davar. It's it's very nice. Avol haroitzchum halolu loyle emuna darshila. The people in during the war, Loyola, they, they weren't asking for belief or not belief in God. That wasn't their issue. The Holocaust people, victims of the Nazi Germany, were not, they weren't victims because they were Jewish. They weren't, nobody was asking them to believe or not to believe. That wasn't the question. 
whether you're an atheist or whether you're a believer, you're Jewish, you're dead. Ulohama says, Kulam al Shinol the Yehudim, just because they were born Yehudim. Bechima inyan yesh bezeh. What is that? What kind of what what categories does that fall into? Hein gamu have sharas lekadosh es shmoi lenitla naharudim. Even to sanctify God's name is not given to these victims. Nebuch. Im kain al mavalama. What is the purpose then? What is the purpose of their death? So Rav Desla does not give in, concede that it is a kiddush Hashem. He says it's mekadosh shmoi yisbarach in the heart of every one. Not a, not a grand demonstration of Kiddush Hashem, but a sanctifying God's name in every person's individual Yid's heart. When he says Shema Yisrael, Hashem Alikein, Hashem Achod, as he goes into the gas chamber, or Gok is about to be shot. That would be a Kiddush Hashem. No, that is sanctifying God's name in his own heart. It's not the classic case in Halacha of Kiddush Hashem. Kiddush Hashem is defining as something where you have a choice to do something and escape the death or not as, but this wasn't a case of you, can't, you couldn't do anything to escape their death you to, you're dying like, 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 like sheep on a, on a, in, in, in a herd you know it's just like you're slaughtering the animal you're not giving me a choice you do this and I'll let you go or don't do that and I won't let you go you had no choice parents it wasn't no given a choice that's not Kiddush Hashem Kiddush Hashem in, in technical cases in the Gemara in Shas is where you're given a choice either to go and be over by the Zara the other Averis that are very severe and then you will be spared. If you don't do it, you can be killed. This wasn't the case in, this, in, 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 in Nazi Yemach Shemot. That wasn't the case. There was no way they'll be spared. Is there a distinction between that and the Kaddish Shem Shemayim? We're just talking about it. That's what I'm saying, parents. I'm saying it's not considered Kiddush Hashem in the fashion in Shas when you don't not given the choice of doing an Avera to spare yourself. If it's only because you're Jewish, that may not be considered a Kiddush Hashem Shemayim as the Allah considers your Shemayim. You are sanctifying your name in your own heart. Mm-hmm. It's different than saying it's a Kiddush Hashem. In the, you're making a Kiddush Hashem in the world. You're not. You're making Kiddush Hashem to yourself. Which is, as Esther says, it's, it's, it's Lamaila from everything. It's above and beyond what regular death could offer. Can I ask you why it's important to make that distinction? Well, there are halachas about... Um, there are halachas about people who die al Kiddush Hashem, what they're promised, and those who do not die in Kiddush Hashem, and they may be they may be promised, they may not be promised. We don't, who knows? We don't know what they're. But those who die al Kiddush Hashem are the highest madrega. The reward is on the highest madrega. <laughs> Excuse me. So. Um, the Rodessa wrote this I can imagine that many people kind of uh, <laughs> cried out of rebellion like what's going on I mean uh, you know it's, uh, my parents they suffered they were tortured and beaten my, my, my young grandson wasn't uh, he was tortured beaten little kid he wasn't Kaddish uh, Truth of the matter is, in, in the Rambam, in, in the beginning of the Rambam Sefer, it implies that somebody who dies, like you said, Paris, before, because he's a Jew, is sufficient to be called the Mikadash Shem Shemayim. But like I mentioned to you, Rabbi Ehrenberg Zatzal, who was a, was a Paisic as well, who was the value of Shua, five Chalukim, and others. Don't believe it's necessarily a kiddush shemayim, but we said that's what we said, and you know, and uh, there are a number of a few other people like that that don't, don't believe it was a kiddush shemayim. So it reminds me of of something that I I feel I should maybe we should share together about kiddush shemayim. If somebody go, somebody behaves in a way that they're not, they're, you volunteer a certain kind of behavior that offers the non-Jew to see this, or the Jew, another non from Jew to see this and say, "Wow, this is some kind of religion. This is what a beautiful religion." He's being mekadesh shemayim. 
that's what the Rishonim is saying. And it flies in the face of what I just mentioned now from Rav Desla and from Rav Ehrenberg. So it's Hal Hab, Rav Desla, Lichadel Rav Racha, and Rav Ehrenberg. Also, Rav Shlaim Azam, Rav Racha also agreed with Rav Desla. So, um, but the Rambam seems to say that there's a Kiddush Hashem, even if you dress a certain way, that people say, oh, I like the way this person dresses, the Jews dress very carefully, or they're meticulously clean, they're neat, they talk beautifully, they don't really talk gossip, they don't talk about others. That's Kiddush Hashem Shemayim. Or, for example, like the fellow who returned the uh, large amount of money that he found in a, in a drawer that had been sold to him in a, in a desk set, and they said... By returning that money publicly to the person to whom lost it and had no knowledge of it and gave it up, in fact, that was a kiddush Hashem. Because he had a choice, parents. See, the, uh, the, the key word is because he had a choice. Did the Jews in the Holocaust have a choice, parents, of not dying? There was no question. There was no choice. This, this fellow could have kept it. Nobody would have known anything about it. But he felt like he wanted to act like the Be'er HaGoyle writes in Choshi Mishpat and give back a, a Veda of an Akum so that at the Roshan of Hashem, so he created a Kiddush Hashem. Rav Oshrei Sitzal, in his responses, where Blade pointed out, pointed out instances where a father could have saved one of his children and said, rather than having another child take the place of his child, he would not sacrifice another child's life. And, that's, and a, that's a halacha question, President, and the, I don't think we should be discussing that at this point. That's not the realm of what we're discussing. But there could have been individual acts of Kiddush Hashem. Maybe. Maybe there could have been actually, possible, very possible. But we're not, that's, we're not talking about where the, the halacha is involved. It's mm-hmm. another whole story, you know, repair it. Um, so I just want to, the reason what, what, what motivated me to talk about this now, because the, the Pesach is the, is the Chag Haba Emuna in the Rabbani Shalom. And Amuna, throughout our life, you should know this. I'm sure you probably know something about this. That Amuna is going to have tremendous nisyanus. The first one we we talk about the most, the most popular one, was the Olikim Nisa Es Avram. The Pashas Vayera, the Abishta tested tested what? Avram Zemunah in the Ebishter. Will, will he still believe that the Bari Elam is what he is? The Avarachmon, is he the Bari Elam that loves him? Is the Bari Elam that... Exactly. So what is this about, this Nisayon? What do we call a Nisayon? What's the ex- what goes through a Nisayon? The experience of a Nisayon, the Chetush Yerim writes in Pashas Ve'era, and the Avoidus Yisrael from the Kajan Tzamagid also writes in Vayera, and other places as well. And the peace that's the Rebbe writes in H. Kaidish as well. And the sign of Amuna is in the sign of Hashem's Esther Panam. God contracts his being a way that we cannot feel him and see him anymore. Because if we could see him, that's not in the sign. So it's he's compelled to hide somewhere that you can't see Hashem, so you don't know. What is Hashem here? What's going on? And it's totally in your mind. Is I I believe in Hashem anyway. That is the Nisayan. And Jews are indigenous, particularly to this Nisayan, more than anyone else, because they have a chiyuv to believe in the Abishta. Atheism is not an option for a Jew. I mean, it's not. <coughs> so, Thinking about it in that way, so we celebrate the Amuna, Pesach. Think about the Nishayinus that you had in your own life. Each one of us should think about the Nishayinus that we have, the challenges we have in our own life. In Amuna, it comes with great pain sometimes. Sometimes we even fail the Nishayinus. It doesn't mean that the Amish, the Chas B'Shalom, is Dechayu. Never. Kalita Hashem Rizamah. Amish does not abandon his children, his Kindalach. He doesn't abandon anyone. Forever you're always attached to him. I'm not going to say that I believe in unconditional love, but I believe that the Abish still loves everyone. Maybe a different level for every single person, but the Abish still doesn't forget about any yid, every yid, as the Nachman of supposedly said. I mean, I, I haven't heard, seen it from him, but I understand he said it, or another great Rebbe said it, 
that every yid, every yid means every girl, every man, every boy, every woman, every child, is a ben yachid to the bari olam. Everyone who gets up in the morning and says, Baruch atah Hashem alikein melech olam, shaloi asani goy, knowing the things that he faces, and knowing that he thinks that he could avoid, he could have, he, he could have been avoided if he was not Jew. He could do more things, have more fun, have more, at least temporarily, at least for the, the onset of his physical being existence, he could have a lot more fun. At the end, they all, all balances out because they have to go to work and they have to earn a living and they don't always have a good job and they can't pay their bills and so on and so forth. So this is the end. We have a bunch of them to and we get schar for it. We get we get rewarded for not giving up on, and our abish then when we have those nishyanis from not having parnas and not having chasvisham even children or whatever it may be, we give up. We 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 get schar for believing in the abish and holding on to our emuna, which is really the essence, the quintessence of who we are as as yidden. By emuna b'shem first, and then of a moshe avdai. And that kind of a moon brings to an Az Yashir. It brings, to, it brings us to a song. I, um, I'm going to share with you some of the Shilas that came about that it's it's just heartbreaking and it tears you. Guts out. It just tears it out. I mean, it's Mamash literally because the Shilas that people have to ask or forced to ask because we have a Torah. Eternal Torah. And the Torah applies to us even when we're um, in a situation where we're in a two by two room and we have to make a decision what to, to turn right or to turn left. We have a Torah that tells us what to do. So, Arab Nebenzal, who was the Shlita, who was a Talmud Muhok, and a Machutin to Rab Chaim Kanyevsky, he's a Machutin to Rab Chaim Kanyevsky, he's also a Talmud Muhok of Rab Shlem, and Mora and Rab Shlem is Almond, Zatzal. He talks about like commemorating the names with some kind of a what is that press we have on on on, on the on twin towers the wall with the name what's it called plaques the plaques right those plaques those those, tab, those built tablets of whatever um, memorial plaques, memorial plaques right that are built. So he was asked, is there any Indian to do that for the six million? Even though you don't know the name, just the plaque saying six million zechar nishmas the six million kedushim tahirim that were killed in this country, in this continent. Poland. So I'll read you what he answers. The best thing to do is says, Lahansiach bisforim, eternalize in sforim. Give a gift to a sefer, to a yeshiva, a beis medrash, a shul, and say, Ili nishmas, or write Ili nishmas, so and so and so. Over my chesed and with acts of kindness. You have in Muncie, they have this thing called. Um, I have this program. It's chaverim, flat tires. People come running over. It means mikan It's unbelievable. Like, right? They're running over to help you, and they get on the floor, and they they're so happy to help you, and they come in with a smile. And then you say to yourself, "Ilnishmas, my great grandfather was killed, or whatever it may be." That is really affecting his neshama. It's impacting his neshama. Who says? Who says that? Well, I think it's good I look at the practice of the Chavetz Chaim Ahavetz Chesed. And you'll see that he writes that. He has a long, elaborate discussion about the perversion of the mem- memory of these people that just make a fancy um, plaque memorial and that's just made from something which is material. It's a material thing. It's done. We eternalize the name, the reputation, the the, the, the memory of this person, Hashem Yom Kum Dammam, Dammam, Gachid, by doing Maisim Toivim Bechaz, that goes into their bank account in Olam Habu, and then Hashem is elevated. And we have no idea. We don't, we don't live in the world of the Shamas. And we shouldn't live in the world of the Shamas. But we have to know we're not living in the world of the Shamas. Just to go go for a second. The Sasva Rebbe Yitzchak was once asked about a certain person 
it looked like he was very inappro- acted inappropriately all the time. And he was always nice to him. The rabbi was nice to him. Yeah, to that person was always inappropriate. He acted inappropriate in so many areas, <coughs> almost, almost every area. So forget about whether it's the right thing to do the wrong thing, but the word that he said really sums up the attitude that we should have as well. So the Rabbi Zechariah Lebracha was asked this question, and he said, well, you know, I live here in this world. I don't live in Shemayim. I don't know what the Hebrew thinks about him. What should I do? I live this world. This world I know I have to judge him with Mustami, he did, Mustami that, whatever it may be. I can't judge him any other, <coughs> other than that. Unless you have a psakalacha from some kind of a bezin, whatever it is. But that is such a beautiful thought. He says, I live here. I live in Elam Hazir. Don't talk to me about, you know, he's, he's a Russian Russian and Elam Habba. Forget about what he is, in the, uh, how, Hashem, how Hashem rules. I don't know, I'm no business on Hashem knows, like, judges him. Only how I do. So, I am, um, remember somebody asking a, a, a famous Paisic, uh, and when I call somebody a Paisic, there's a standard of knowing Shas and Babu Yerushalmi, at least and Tur B'Shesh and Shulchan Aruch, Baba Raman Taz. But I just want to, somebody asked this place like whether or not, um, Rashi says, by Mitzrayim, she says, Laisa'ev Mitzri, don't reject totally an Egyptian, because you are a, you lived in his land. And Rashi says, even though you were tortured and everything else, and they throw your males to the water and to drown, because you were, for you were, because you, you had a home, you had a place to stay. Would we say that about Germany? So he says, no. Why? Because the reason why, if you remember, person, in the beginning of Shemay, it says, before the, all the trouble, and he says, Hein Am Yisrael, he says, Rav This nation was bigger and stronger than us. Maybe they make a war and leave. If they were sure that that wouldn't happen, maybe they wouldn't have done, held the Jews captive. Maybe they were just sort of Maybe it deprived them of certain things, but not really tortured them. They were torturing them because they thought they were going to take over the country. Mm-hmm. So for that, you could say, listen, you, you, you lived in the land, you had some comfort, you had, a, you had, you had somewhere to sleep, and, you know. But Germany's Yemach Shemam, they were out just lahashmid, laharig, lahabid. There is no rationale for that hate. And usually, usually, I don't want to say this, Ration, hate has no rationale. That's why it's called sinas chinam. Hate is just simple and healthy. It's just an unhealthy thing. You hate someone, you hate something. You could dislike it. And I wonder why we can't just get rid of that word hate and just say, I don't like something. Imagine oh, if the word hate didn't exist, how much better a world we would be living in. <clears throat> yeah, the other side spectrum is uh, the other side of the extreme. The other extreme is that somebody asked a great Paisik also in the, the days in Poland if I could escape the concentration camp. But the Nazis had a certain amount of people that they knew were in there, and that's what they killed per day 60 people. And this guy sneaks out of the line and he runs away. So they're going to take another Jew and they says that of him or her. Are they allowed to escape? He comes, what kind of questions? Think of everybody. Think of these questions. Ay, oh, mama, she can pull tears out of your eyes. They have to ask such questions. So the Paisik told him that he cannot, he can, he can. He goes, and Petura, that was a story about having one container of water. I mean, whatever the story of Babamitsia, as you know, if you want to call me and ask me, you can ask me the story. But if you look at Babamitsia, you see the story. One's life.
takes precedent over someone right. else's. Right, right, right. Chayecha koyim, it's called. Your life comes first. Even if you don't want to. You can't, it's not just a benefit. It's not just a gift that Hashem says, you know, I'm giving you a gift, your life comes first. It's a chiyuv. Chayecha koyim, you can't sacrifice your life for someone else's. You can't offer it. Say, you know, you know. Even though the Torah says I, I can do it, but you know what? I'm Michael. <laughs> you can't be Michael. That's that's the halacha. Again, I told you that I'm I'm not sure what, what this is. This is some kind of a inspiration that brought me to speak about this concept of amuna and the nisyanis that we have in our life all the time, all the time. We don't we don't miss the nisyanis. The Messiah Shem designates a particular name for, for us people walking in the streets of Flatbush, Lakewood, July, and Bnei Brak, anywhere in the world. Ishchayel, we're warriors. And he calls the war- battle the battle with the Yetzirah. We're warriors. That's who we are. It's a life of battle. When you get out of the battle, you're not living. People are not living. They're existing, but they're not living. They're out of the battle. We can never escape the battle that the Abish to put us in to elevate ourselves, make us greater. Goyach Bar, it's a special, unique nation in the whole world. Because Yerbuch will help us that we should appreciate the Goyach Bar, that we were free to become that was the Tanai. We see as um as there Moshe Rabbeinu said when I leave, take out of Mitzrayim, Tav Dun Esel Ikim, meaning going from one service to another service. One is so what should I say? So eternal, so beautiful, so magnificent. You stop serving Egypt. Tav Dun Esel Ikim Bar is you're going to serve God in this holy mountain. Think about this as Mitzrayim is the the marching call towards Ahar Sinai. Kali Yisrael is going to be elevated to the level where it's going to be called Yisrael Acher B'cho Espoir. You're the Jews that I'm so proud of. I love so much. There's nothing as great as Kali Yisrael. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rabbi Leib Trapper. And Chakashi B'Sameach to all of you. I don't speak again. And Mr. Shem, you should use the Pesach for the right thing. And you'll be surprised how much you could reach in a Pesach in your mind if you are not busy with Narishkeit. I mean, it's not even... I'm just saying this is a PS to what we said before. It's not even busy with one thing or another. This is busy with the Ruchnis of Pesach or busy with Narishkeit, where you shop, where you ate, where you bought, where you sat, where you didn't, where you moved, you saw, what this is, and, that, and, and this guy's making this much money, I can make that much money, he's doing this. this I don't need to tell you the rest. It's, it's so important to focus on what's really important in life. The, the Ruchnis of Pesach, it's on, a, it's on a platter offering it to us. Understanding what Abadi when Yiru meant, understanding with Vayetzi Eno, Hashem Alikeinu, Hashem redeeming us, taking us out, Biyad Chazok, Hashem Ziyad Chazok, Zrayin Etuya, His kindness, His love for us, what that means, how we could go and forever be indebted to Hashem in Lamaisa, in action. Thank you. I coach you with some of you. Amen.